Hello and welcome back to KTech Designs. My name is Seth. In this video, I'll show you how I made this LED plate stand in FreeCAD. I will show you the final assembly at the end of the video. And with that, let's get started. Okay, so as always, let's start from the start page in FreeCAD. Let's create a new part. Uh, the way I did this was I made two part containers and uh, just modeled them uh, next to each other in the same part. So let's go to the top part and let's rename this to stand. And let's go to the bottom part and name this bottom. Let's begin with the stand. Let's go to the part design workbench. Let's create a body. Uh, that did not go where I wanted it to go. Let's go double click the stand. Click body. There we go. Uh, I'm just going to rename these. I'm going to flip them. So you're going to be underscore for now. You're just going to be body. And then you're going to be body 001. Let's make sure this is selected. Let's make a new sketch. Pick the top plane. And we'll draw a rectangle here. Now we can click the two corners and the origin and click symmetric and that'll make it symmetric um, both horizontally and vertically which is very convenient. Um, let's go ahead and add the fillets now. Constraint preserving fillets and those are going to be about 10 millimeters. Now we'll select all of them. Make them 10 millimeters. And it will automatically add an equal relation to all of those uh, radii. So then we can pick, uh, we'll pick this edge or this point. Pick those two points. We'll make that 108. And uh, these two points. And make that 45. Let's try that again. 4, 5. Close that. So now let's create a pad from that. We want it to be 21 millimeters tall. But we're going to add a taper angle to it. Negative 3. So that it pinches in. And this is purely for uh, aesthetic reasons. Um, if you're going to injection mold this part, you know, this is the way you would design it. Um, so I guess maybe I had that a little bit in mind. But it also just looks kind of nice to not just be a, a complete square. All right, so let's click OK on that. So now let's create our cutout slot for the uh, plaque, for the um, nameplate. Uh, so let's make a sketch on the top plane. I'm going to close that, and then we're going to automatically change the position in the Y direction to 21 millimeters back into editing the sketch and let's add in our rectangle and we can constrain this the same way. We're going to add in sketch fillets on all corners. Select all of the arcs and we're going to constrain or we're going to Radius this to one millimeter. Come on. Let's pick these points and we're going to make this um, just three millimeters wide. And that's because our plate is two millimeters. Um, we could probably go a little bit tighter, but I want to be able to take the part out pretty easily. Uh, let's make that uh, 69 long. I think I had 67 or 68 for the length of the plate. So this will give us plenty of clearance on either side. Now we're going to close that. And let's create a pocket. I think 12 millimeters deep is what I wanted on that. And uh, no taper angle. 
Actually, let's edit that and make that just three. Now this gets a little bit tricky. This part needs to be hollow. So I actually don't want any of this material in there. So we need to make this hollow. And you could do it with this thickness feature. It'll create a shell. But I had so many issues with that feature. Um, it was completely unreliable. I couldn't add features after the fact without completely confusing the geometry. And I'd get these spiky triangles sticking out. So we're going to have to do it a little bit the hard way. But it's not terrible. So what we want to do is we want to create an offset of this sketch. And to do that, let's go over to the draft workbench. And we can create an offset here, having the sketch selected. And um, the offset should be three millimeters, I believe. So I'll just key in three, hit enter. You can see we made an offset there. Let's convert it to a sketch and let's stick it back in the body. Are you kidding me? All right, so something annoying about the draft workbench is that whatever view you're in, it makes the sketch align with that view. So we're just going to redo this quick. Uh, key in three. All right, that's good. Convert it. That can go away. And we'll go back into the body. All right. I think that's better. That's also on the correct plane. So we're going to do a pocket with that. So back to the part design workbench. We'll do a pocket. Just make sure the pocket's going in the right direction. Reversed. So it's 21 tall, and we want three millimeters um, of a gap there. So I believe that's 18, 18 high. And let's add a taper angle to that as well of negative three, negative three, to match the outside. Click OK. So that's one easy way to do an offset sketch. Um, I really wish the thickness uh, feature worked a little bit better. Um, but it's not the end of the world. We can still get around it. So you probably do want to come in here and add all of your sketch relations so that if you ever update the outer uh, dimension, you can easily come in here and uh, make those changes. But um, we don't need to spend a bunch of time. Okay, I feel better that that is fully defined now. So, we now need to create a boss extrusion here, which will hold the plate in place. Um, we don't want the plate to be rocking back and forth, and because we have an LED strip that we're putting in the bottom, we also want to capture that light. We don't want it to be scattered all over the place. You know, we we kind of want to channel it through here. So to, to do that, we're going to need the pocket sketch for this, and we're also going to make an offset for it. So let's go back to the top. Let's pick our pocket sketch. We're going to go to the draft workbench. And we'll go ahead and do the offset um, right away. And that should also be three. Uh, that didn't work. Uh, let's just try cloning it first. And let's do an offset of that clone. This is, that is quite something. Let's try something here. 
Let's see if I do it on the bottom. Apparently I turned on perspective mode. Okay. Well, I don't know why that worked. It, uh, it mostly worked. Uh, regardless, let's just um, convert it. Uh, shapes must appear planar. Well, I don't know what you did there, guy. Maybe I can just um, upscale it or downscale it. All right, so let's see about maybe deleting some of these bad edges. Okay, what is this? Edge one. Well, maybe that'll let me convert it into a sketch. All right. Let's edit the sketch and are you kidding? Oh. All right, let's add in a line. Connect that, make sure it's vertical. All right. So this is something that's pretty annoying in FreeCAD is just working with sketch offsets. I've seen several videos on how to do it and I don't know if there's a, a best way to do it. Um, I'm just doing what makes the most sense to me and if it doesn't make sense to you, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but at least you know this is a way to produce what you want. So anyway, so now we have this sketch and this sketch. Uh, let's convert that one, blow that away. And then I wanna merge these. So let's go to the, uh, the sketcher and uh, let's create a merge. These two can die and then we can drag this back to our body. All right, so now we've got our special sketch here. What we're gonna wanna do is change its placement to 18, I believe, which is right underneath there. And then we'll create a pocket. Uh, sorry, we'll create a pad back in the part design workbench, uh, reverse that direction. And we'll just make that 11 with a negative three taper on it. Yeah, and click OK. We can add some dress ups here and some um, uh, mounting bosses on the bottom. So let's just add chamfer here. Uh, one millimeter is good. And let's add a little fillet in here. Again, one millimeter is fine. Let's put a chamfer on this outer edge and let's make that about three millimeters. It's starting to take shape. All right, so let's put on the boss features, the mounting features on the bottom. Don't do that. Let's create a new sketch, pick the top plane. Um, mm -hmm. Right, so we're gonna have to change the, uh, the mounting position for that. So let's close that. Because I wanna design an inner cap here, this boss feature needs to be up about uh, three millimeters. Oh, stop it, I picked the wrong one. Uh, we'll do 3.3 just to add some clearance. And let's go back to editing that sketch. Um, let's go to the bottom view. So because this part is tapered, that's actually good for us. Um, so we can put this edge as our, well, I'll just sketch it. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Now for this one, I'm actually going to go ahead and use this feature here. I know it's not 
great. It's not great to do that, uh, but it will help me here. Did I take? Okay, there's my point. I don't know why it's not invisible. Uh, we need a... Uh, let's just do a polyline. Where's my polyline? There's the polyline. Something like this. Okay. And then we'll do a uh, three-point arc off of that. Okay. Well, the view is making it difficult for me to grab these parts, so let's go back to the correct view. Let's, uh, come on. Um, let's hide this body, and then let's move to the top view. Let's merge those. Those should be tangent. Same at the bottom. Pick those two. Make them tangent. And there it is. Oh, there's the point. Okay. Let's uh let's just make these coincident. So this leg should be uh let's not dimension it that way. Uh, right, let's put the inner hole in there, like that. Um, right, so let's add this coincident. Uh, yeah, that one. Now this hole is going to get a brass insert, a heat set insert. So let's make that diameter um, 4.2, which is what I calculated, or uh, which is what is recommended for the type of uh, M3 insert that I bought. Um, let's make this four millimeters. <clears throat> so then the last thing we need to do is the uh, diameter for this. And I'm going to do that as an offset. So I'm going to add this point here, coincident, and then uh, I need a second one. I'll just do a line here. I'll make it easier. I guess I could have done a line the whole time. That needs to be uh, construction. And then we'll dimension that to three. So that sets the thickness. And... Um, hmm, uh, We'll do it as a mirrored feature rather than a mirrored sketch to make the one on the other side. So let's close that. Bring back the visibility of the body. You can see where it is there. We will pad, sorry, uh, pad that. And that should go all the way up to the surface. Uh, I'm not going to pick that type because, of course, referencing. Um, Geometry like that's just a bad idea. Uh, so we'll do 15 millimeters and um, a taper angle of a positive three so that it's out like that. Click OK on that. Um, that works. Uh, there's lots of other ways you could fasten this. Honestly, I could just make this a, a three millimeter hole and the uh, M3 machine screw will cut threads into it because it's just plastic. Or I could get an actual plastic screw. Uh, I just don't have any sitting around. Um, and I want this to go all the way down so that as I push the uh, insert in, it's going to push material behind it. I need to have uh, space here for that extra material to go. So that's how that's going to work. So with that, we're going to mirror it about here. Looks like the default was correct. And that's looking pretty good. Well, let's add a little chamfer to the inside to these holes here. And um, one millimeter works. And so that's pretty much it. Um, 
The only thing we need to do is create a little mouse hole cutout for the uh, the power cable to exit out of here. So that's just going to be a simple pocket. Cut on the front plane. So I'll create a new sketch. Um, put it... Yeah, I can be on the top plane there. Hide this body so I can see what I'm working on. And we'll cap it off with a little arc. Let's make a... Uh, I shouldn't have to do that if these are tangent. Of course these should be tangent. And if you really wanted to get fancy, you could take off this vertical and uh, we could add a three degree taper there. All right, so um, let's set the height. Let's do a construction line from here to here. Let's start over. 7.7 .7 and 30. And uh, we'll make this the uh, 4.5. All right. Okay, we're happy again. So we want to cut this through the front here. Obviously, we don't want to cut through here, so let's move the sketch over. Um, wrong direction. Wrong again. There we go. Doesn't have to be all the way up to there. It just needs to not cut through any of this. Um, actually, why don't we just move it all the way out? And then we'll cut it inward. Perfect. All right. Now the final step to do on this part, um, the first iteration I did, I just had these two surfaces here that were fastened and that actually made this cap wobbly because there's nothing to stop it on either side of here. So we're gonna add uh, some uh, feet there. Um, and this will be pretty simple. Let's add a new sketch on the top plane. I'm going to close that and we're going to move it to the same position. 3.3 .3 as the fastening bosses. Go to the bottom. And we're just going to make pair of rectangles and that'll be plenty of material for the cap to rest on. Um, we're gonna make these uh, points, of course it won't let me select points when the body is visible or you're not looking down on it. It's alright, we'll figure it out. Make those symmetric. We'll make these legs equal. Uh, I'll make the outer legs equal as well. This leg should be 1.5. And then the outer spacing is 39. This we will make six millimeters long. Why not? Six. There we go. And um, yeah, let's add a symmetric constraint in that direction. All right. Close it. Bring back the body. And then we're going to pad this 15. There you go.
Okay, we are done with the top half. Okay, so we are done with the top half and now we can move on to the bottom. What I'm going to do is make a copy of this sketch via a offset. And to make this bottom fit into here snugly, I don't want it to be identical to this. So I'm just going to have a uh, 0.3 millimeter offset on that. The draft workbench way. I will just clone it and convert sketch. Easy enough. And then we'll add all the constraints back in. Just update this to 107.75 and 38.75. And we'll make this 7. Click close. Now let's just double check that it's sitting inside there where we expect. Oh, sorry. Uh, this should be. Uh, 101.75 okay so we'll take this sketch back in our part design and we'll create a pad uh, let's make sure we have the right body active create a pad and that should only be three millimeters high all right now I want to use a countersunk screw so I don't want to make a simple hole um, I want to use the the whole feature. So let's make a sketch on the top plane. And uh, let's add a pair of circles. Let's hide both of these bodies actually. So I can see what I'm doing here. Make those symmetric. Make those equal. Let's set the spacing to 94. So let's close that. And we can bring this back visible. Uh, where's the sketch? Sketch is on the bottom. Okay, correct. So I want to make sure that the sketch is on this surface, not the top surface because I'm going to add counter sinks and I need those to be on this side. All right, so the profile will be isometric regular M M3 there. I will do a standard clearance dimension. I'll just say uh well, I don't want it to try to punch through. It shouldn't punch through the other part, but just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and key in 3. Let's do a counter sink. And I want an 82 degree countersink. Apparently I have to do reverse there so it comes through. And we'll click OK. So that in and of itself is enough of a cap. And I could just move on from here. But I want to add some features in here to make it a little easier to assemble. So I'm going to add some rails here to make sure I know exactly where the LED strip should go every time. I won't have to try to guess. And then I'm going to add a little tab here to key in with the uh, the top cover, or the top part here. We can hide the stand again. So let's add in that little tab on the side here. And that's just going to be a square. Um, we'll make it four millimeters. Uh, we'll make those equal. Let's dimension this first. That's 28 off of there. And uh, 22.5. Right, so I just decided I would have a little bit of an overlap there. 
just to make sure that the part um, makes us solid. Click close, click pad, click three, and there you go. Now let's make sure that that fits in there properly. It does. Excellent. So this will be the mouse hole for the cable to go through for power. All right, so let's hide the stand again. Uh, so now let's make a sketch on the uh, side plane here. And we're going to create some rails for the LEDs strip to sit between. And that's just going to be a pair of rectangles. Make those edges, make those points symmetric. Make those legs equal. And we'll make these equal as well. I'll go ahead and dimension this three millimeters off the bottom. And uh, I want to set the spacing between them at three millimeters, sorry, 12 millimeters. And then the, uh, the overall height is five for that leg. And we'll make them three millimeters thick. All right. Now we're going to do a symmetric pad. Um, we don't need two dimensions. We just need, uh, There it is. And the length should be 65. Let's then add in chamfer on the ends here. Now, FreeCAD has this issue with chamfering that you can't chamfer, your chamfer size can't be taller than the height of your leg. So I made the leg five millimeters tall, but I cannot chamfer it at five or over five. So I'm plugging in 4.99 to get an approximation to what I need. All right, so then just for material stability, I would like to grab that edge. Um, let's fill it that edge plus the one on the other side. And we'll make that, let's say, two millimeters. And then uh, I'm going to grab these inner edges here. And we'll do a, a one millimeter chamfer. OK, now we're done. We finished the stand. We finished the bottom. And all that's left is to 3D print it. And that's pretty easy. Um, if you haven't spent time exporting um, STL files from FreeCAD, uh, you just want to select the body, export, and you pick the uh, STL mesh, and make sure that it's named the way you want it. So it's probably something like, uh, I don't know, plate stand dash top. Okay. And then you go to the bottom, and then do the same thing, export, plate, stand, dash, bottom. Okay, And that's it. That's how I modeled the plate stand for my uh, LED illuminated name tag thingy. Uh, hopefully you liked that video. Uh, please leave a like if you did. Uh, please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought or if you had any questions or suggestions. Uh, I hope that these have been uh, helpful for you. Uh, simply making these models and videos has been very helpful for me to get familiar and get uh, accustomed to how FreeCAD works and what mindset I should have when I'm trying to design something new. Um, again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.